Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, I hope you're all keeping safe and finding things to do indoors during this tricky time. Right, before I go on to today's video, which is about uh, my general settings for, for an average day sport, yesterday's video, I think, probably caused a little bit of confusion because I used three sports images to show you the content aware tool. Um, a few questions are asked about if I remove objects, players, bits and bobs before I send to the desk. That's a massive no-no and I should have said that really, sorry for, for any confusion. I'll take the shot and then whatever is in that shot goes. And then my desk might do a bit of colouring or if I'm sending off the camera, back of the camera on the wire, um, the desk might give it a bit of colour, a bit of sharpening and then they'll send it off to the papers. Now whatever the papers do with it is, is up to them. They can move a ball into a different spot, they can uh, stamp out players, they can do what they like, but as far as we're concerned, we send whatever we take. So, those three images yesterday were just as an example. I perhaps should have done a bit more uh, in depth work into my archives and gone and found some landscapes with some people stood in them and, and taken them out, but no, I just, I just used three, three images that I thought would be ideal to show you the content aware tool. But uh, anyway, that's that out of the way and cleared up. Right, uh, today's video is about uh, settings, my basic settings, so I'm going to take you, I've got the camera set up here ready, so I'm going to take you through the info panel and show you each individual setting and show you what I uh, set up for an average day's shooting, so let's get on with that. Right, so I'll show you on the back of the camera on the info panel, so let's just hit the Q button. Right, so I'm usually at if I can be anywhere from 1250th to 2000 I will be, obviously depending on lighting. But uh, yeah, so I'm usually shooting at 1600 or 2000 if I can. Lowest probably 1250th, just uh, to make sure, the high shot speed just to make sure that I get everything frozen. You know, the ball frozen, movement frozen, certainly in football anyway. Um, moving on to f-stop, again usually I'll be at 2.8. Um, might go up to 3.2, sometimes on the videos you've seen I'm at, I'm at f3.5 on the 400 just to give me a, a, a slightly bit of better depth for players that are far away. Um, again on the 70 to 200 from a goal mouth action I'll, I might even knock that right up to f, f5 or even sometimes 5.6 just so that I know even if I'm only obviously got my autofocus spot on the one player I'll have a bit of a good depth to obviously keep the players around him also pretty sharp. So yeah, so for my 70 to 200, it'll be on it'll be on roughly five, 5.6, 4.5 perhaps at a push. But and then the the 400, I'll always shoot at three. Sometimes because it's a bit of an old 400 now, 2.8 seems a little bit soft now. So I'm usually shooting at 3.2 or 3.5 on the 400. Um, ISO. I shoot in auto. Um, a lot, I know, I know quite a few lads that don't, but I shoot in auto, and I like to. We'll come on to the uh, exposure control, exposure compensation in a moment. But yeah, so I'll always shoot on auto ISO, and then I can control my exposure on uh, on the set button. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, obviously, we're on manual. So yeah, on the auto. When I've got auto ISO, I can knock up and down my exposure compensation and that's just by holding the set button and moving the top wheel and then I can knock it up and down to suit. Um, I'll just show you a, a couple of pictures here as we're talking. Um, uh, just an example of, I was looking at some, uh, some fans um, and because I was at the end of the stadium at the end of the stand, sorry. Um, the fans were obviously covered in sunlight, so I knocked the compensation down and got, uh, obviously made the fans with nice orange faces looking into the sun, and uh, it sort of, as you can see, it halved the, the frame, so that's it's handy for that. Um, obviously, if the sun goes in or, or whatever, you can knock it up and down quickly. Um, so yeah, that's my ISO being an auto and my exposure compensation, which is controlled by the set button and the top wheel. So moving down, obviously, that's your flash settings. Now I've got I've got a user defined number one. So if we go into that, I've got my sharpness ramped up to plus seven. So in the camera body, my sharpness is at plus seven all the time. Let's just go and have a look in 
the menu, one second, so user defined, standard, let's go into that. Yeah, so my sharpness is at plus seven, so I ramp that up all the way to plus seven. Zero contrast, I've got it to plus one on the saturation, just have that plus one, just a little bit of dabbing. And the colour tone is at zero, so that's my, and I've, I've set this to the user defined one. So that's that. Usually shooting cloud. Um, I find it gives me slightly better colours. Uh, obviously, sunny, sunny days you'd, you'd, you'd go to the, the sun setting. These are all easy accessible in the, in the touch of a button, obviously, but auto white balance I sometimes find is a little bit flat. So I tend to shoot in cloud, which just gives me a bit better depth in the colours. So that's the colour setting. Obviously the white balance. Now this is handy. When I've shot at the London Stadium before uh, at West Ham games, for some odd reason their ground always, the images out of there always seem to come out with a little bit of a green tinge. So I'll knock it down a little bit into the magentas and I might just knock it across into the blues as well. So, And then I would hit set button and then that will give me my colour shift just to compensate for the, the natural light that you get from various grounds. Again, it's quite handy. Uh, let's just change it back to, before I forget, so I'll take that back to zero. It's quite handy for evening floodlit games at like lower league, lower league grounds. You get a lot of yellowness from the floodlights uh, if they're not LEDs. You can play about with the white balance, you know, just to compensate for what colours you think. Take a couple of frames, then knock it up a bit, take another frame until, you, until it looks right. So that's the white balance shift settings. Let's go back to that. Uh, yeah, auto light optimizer, I've always got that off. Just, I can control the exposures and all those bits myself. So that's that. Back out of there. Shooting AI servo, obviously all the time. Constantly tracking on the AI servo and the autofocus. So that's AI servo. Then let's scroll across. You've got your evaluative metering. I'm in evaluative. Um, it just gives me the best of both worlds, really. It's 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 what they call the general purpose setting. If you was to scroll across and go to partial metering, that's for if you've got stuff that's really well backlit. And then, obviously, as you scroll scroll across, you've got your spot metering. That's for um, metering a specific object. Um, and then, obviously, your centre weighted which again is for uh, brightness metering, but I like to use evaluative, just gives you the best of both worlds and covers everything in one go that does, so that's a good setting. Obviously I'm um, shooting at high speed, continuous, that's pretty straightforward really, always have it at high speed, up to 12 frames per second for these 1DXs, and then into custom functions. I use my AF on button to activate a second lot of settings. So let's just go into that, and then tells you here, info detail set, and that's my second lot of settings. Obviously I was using it for pan blur. So you would hit the AF on button, hold it down. Some people use this for back button focusing, but I've always um, focused on my top shutter button. Just can't get my muscle memory right to use the uh, back button focusing. So yeah, so I use that for a second lot of settings the AF on and you would go let's just take you back into there so into there scroll down hit set hit in info and then you can set all these to whatever whatever you like uh, obviously in manual um, last time I shot and tried to I think I was at Southampton last time so I had the shutter speed down to 60th just to try and get some pan blurs f-stop was at 14 so yeah that's what and you can go on and on and on setting all these up so that's what I use the AF on button for the AE lock button the button next to it I use to hold my focusing down yeah so I would hold the AE lock button down say for instance I was taking a picture of a free kick from the far end I would focus on the goalkeeper or on the free kick taker and then I would just hold that so that my focus point will lock on, on the player, on the certain player. Obviously the free kick's taken, let go and you're back to, back to normal autofocus. So yeah, so that's what those two buttons are for. And then obviously my set button, like I went through earlier, the set button is for my exposure compensation. So I would hold the set button down scroll the top wheel and that would obviously move my exposure into plus minus just like we showed you earlier just up there so that's what that's for and that's it guys 
that's all my basic settings for a, a day's photography. Well, hopefully, guys, that was uh, that showed you a bit of an insight into my settings. Say, so, feel free to fire any questions down in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, you guys obviously might use different settings and want to know why, what, what the difference is. So yeah, feel free to fire away with any questions, and uh, hopefully that's helped you out a bit. Anyway, thanks for watching. Keep you and your families safe, guys, indoors. Give it a thumbs up, it'd be great if you could give it a like, and it'd be awesome if you could hit that subscribe button. Keep safe, guys. Catch up soon. Cheers.